So second year, second open tryout. What have you seen from the talent today versus what you expected coming into it? It's much better than last year, without question. I think um, we had we had a bigger turnout last year, but I think talent-wise, there were it was a better turnout this year. Just from you know, I'm curious to see how it, how it looks in the five on five when they start this afternoon. But in the little bit that they showed us so far, it looks like it's a better a better group to to be able to pick from this year. Last year. Ashton Smith, Keanu Post were a couple of the guys who made it yeah. through the tryout and then onto the roster. Are you expecting to possibly have a couple more roster spots this season? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, like we, so we were able to bring five to camp last year. This year, we're only allowed to bring four. They, the league shaved a spot off, so it's a tougher, tougher selection this year. But the fact that those two guys then made the team from camp, I think, Entering this year, we're kind of thinking we'll have the same sort of situation. I think that the uh, with the, the group of guys that we're looking to pick from, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we can have three three of the four, you know, at least play a game for us. I don't know. That's the hope. We'll see. We'll see. With the tryout, is it something that obviously with Stack being his first year coaching, that he kind of knew what? to expect going into today or was it just him having an open mind and looking at the guys as talent? Yeah, wise? kind of. I think um, you, you try to kind of prepare him for what it is. I think that there's, uh, you, you kind of, you know who the real players are and you can see them easy, but then you have to kind of look through, you know, some stained glass to really kind of appreciate the trout for what it is. And once you kind of do that and you, you see a, you know, a, a larger group of the guys that you're picking from, it makes it kind of a fun experience and it uh, it really it kind of it helps you pick out you know where the the NBA talent starts and then you know everyone else kind of you know hangs out I guess. Do you think based on what you saw just early on today that you kind of have an idea of what guys might be making? Yeah I, I'd say I've probably in my head narrowed it down to you know 10 guys or so and then now with the five on five started it'll It'll be easier to tell, like, can guys pick up NBA type, you know, situations. Like they ran some, some four out, no defense, you know, offensive schemes, and pretty easily you can see, okay, if guys struggle with this, then they won't be able to be in the D league. And so from there, now when five on five starts, kind of the same sort of thing. Like as, as, as pressure mounts and as you know, defenses pick up, who can handle it, who can step up to that stuff. So I think it'll be easier to to kind of start narrowing the list down even more once the games start. But yeah, there's definitely a, kind of a group of key players that you're eyeing for sure. Jared Sullinger did a contest via yeah. Twitter and um, paid for a participant to take part today. What do you think the experience has been like for him and, and just getting able to have an NBA player pay for him to yeah. try out and go I through the... Yeah, I think it's great. I think. I actually heard about it this morning. I didn't know that was happening. And then um, they just kind of told me about it. And I think it's a great idea. I, I wish more of our players did that just to kind of interact with them. And I think that's kind of the beauty of the of the tryout is that it, it gives anyone a chance to come and, you know, show us what they have. And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people could probably come in here knowing that they're not good enough, but they get a jersey and they get to be around and, and you know, get their talent evaluated by NBA scouts. So it's a, all around, I think it's a cool experience. And um, I love when people embrace like that. And like what Sully did is, I think it's really cool. What do you think about your new coach? What does uh, Jerry Stackhouse bring to uh, the table? He, a lot, uh, a lot of basketball experience for sure. He's, um, I mean, he, this is his first head coaching job, you know, so there's gonna be, there's gonna be growing pains for sure. And um, it's just the type of thing that as we're working together and going through the season, He's going to bring all of his, you know, past experience in the NBA to to the practices and to the locker room around our players. To me, that's stuff priceless. You know, like you can't find that anywhere. And so, what these guys want to do, he's been, he's walked, he's he knows everything that could happen from a player's perspective. And now, as he's learning how to coach and and and. Um, the stuff that he learned from Coach Casey last year and being around our assistant coaches, all that stuff kind of mixed together with what he brings as a player, I, I think the players are going to absolutely embrace it. And I, I don't know if you can find a better 
from a player's perspective, you could find a better situation to be in the D League from learning from a guy like that, but then also being in the Raptors organization as tight as we are with the main team. I think it's a good combination. That was kind of when, when Jerry showed some interest in doing the job. We were kind of like, all right, this is a, a good opportunity for both him to learn and also for us to use his ex expertise to help our players get better. Do you think that it takes the development portion of the D League up to another level for the 905, even with the assignees? I, yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think like Jesse last year had a different perspective of he had been an NBA coach for so many years as a development guy, so we knew our players were going to improve as players. Jerry will bring a lot of that as well because we have a lot of the same situation set up as what we had, but then he's got that playing resume that from a, even just like conversations with the players and, and, and you know, late game situations and, you know, being in the locker room, things like that, that from a player standpoint, those guys are going to gravitate to a little bit more than what a guy like Jesse can probably you know get across but it, it's kind of two different situations but at the same time we we're comfortable that when our young guys are assigned to the D League they're getting the proper message and the proper development that they need and I think it, it was a, a ridiculous success last year with our young guys developing and I think that we're kind of looking to continue that going this year. What's it kind of like for the 905 when Raptors have such success, they go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and then you got a guy like Norman Powell who is starting some of those games. Yeah. So kind of eye-opening for your 905 players that there's real opportunities. I mean, I think it's a, it's some validation, you know, like it's a a lot of the the D League guys that the, the teammates on on the D League team who you know they'd see our assignment guys come down and take their minutes or whatever, and but at the same time now when they see a guy like Norm in a game in the playoffs participating and like having an impact in those games i think those guys now see like okay like this this league is helping guys get better for the nba and i think it, it kind of opens some eyes and, and it helps it helps um just like i said validate what we're doing and, and the reason why why we have this team